what's up? It's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes and meet your brand new Forest River Salem Cruise Light 171 RBXL. Congratulations on getting your brand new Forest River Salem Cruise Light travel trailer. Let's talk about some of the features. We're going to start right up front with this Ram powered tongue jack. Now you're going to notice three things about this. The manual override access right here, as well as your two rocker switches. The first rocker switch is to raise and lower the RV. So if you're hooking up to the truck, gonna lower it down on the hitch, or if you're setting up and you need to raise it off the hitch, you push up. You also have a little LED light right here, which I know during the day is kind of tough to see, but that does help with uh, setting up at night as well as additional safety and security. If for some reason you do not have power to your cruise light, you can at manually override your powered tongue jack by grabbing this tool, which is located in the storage compartment. You'll see that it fits the top right there, and then you can raise or lower depending on what you needed. And then this just goes right back in there and locks into place. Behind there, you'll have your LP tanks. Now, your LP tanks are gonna have one of two regulators on them. You're either gonna have a regulator that gives you a switch option where you also will have a readout, and depending on which way you move the switch control, that's the tank that you're gonna be using. Open and close your tanks the regular way, and then your regulator is right there. You also will have this LP cover. And one of the things I like to tell people is um, when you're using it, try to put these closure tabs towards the coach because the air, if you're driving down the road, if you had it going the other way, it could get under there and lift this up off of there. You'll also notice that there is a battery disconnect located on the frame. Very nice option there. Plus that little disconnect key can be removed. Powder coated frame on here as well. Now, your storage doors on your cruise light, not only are they magnetic and anti-slam, they also have a dry erase surface over here on the campsite. Very nice little feature if you need to leave some notes. You'll notice the storage room for your tools as well as whatever material you need to store through there. This right here is the adjustable uh, control for your strong arm jack support. Very nice little feature. And right here is the drill attachment for your stabilizer jacks, which are located down here. And you'll see the strong arm right there as well. Now, all of your Forest River Salem cruise lights come with an enclosed underbelly that's known as the accessibility. It's a paneled system. And Bob, I don't know if you can see that there. You see the ridges like we have right here? That denotes where the panels are. So if you need to, if you do need to access something, you can take off one panel at a time. You'll also have solid steps before we get to the awning, which might be a little tough since I got the awning pulled out, but to put your steps away, just lift them up, just be careful. Uh, and you'll notice there is a little grab latch right here, which secures them in place. And if you need to adjust the feet, it's a little push nozzle right here. Push that in, that moves your feet up and down locks into place. Just make sure when you do bring them down that they are flush to the ground and that this top plate is also flush to the coach because if not, you won't be able to close the door. Now, you'll come with the Solera powered awning uh, with the adjustable pitch. And one of the things I like to tell people is if you're gonna adjust the pitch, number one, stand on the inside of the awning because if you pull it down and there's water on top, you're gonna give yourself a little bath. Number two, before you roll it in, lift it back into place so that it's even. So that way when you roll the awning in, it's not gonna go in cockeyed and cause any issues. And it might be difficult to see from where we are today, but there is a little rubber stopper right there on the edge of your awning. That's the manual override. It's just a 7 16th bit that if you need to get in there, you can. Nitro filled tires, as well as Dexter Easy Lube axles on your cruise light. Uh, what we'd like to tell people too, and, and once again, Talk to your technician when you do your walkthrough or ask them, how often do I need to grease these Dexter Easy Lube axles? A good rule of thumb is one or two pumps every thousand miles. Um, but talk to that specialist, depending on where you are, could be different. If you do have outside entertainment, you'll notice your cable connection there and your GFCI outlet right there. This right here is the back of your water heater. And let's see if I can access this for you. Now, a few things to note about your water heater. Number one, if you're gonna change the anode rod or if you just need to get some pressure out, here's your pressure release valve right here. If you do need to do the reset of your water heater, you got the two buttons to push right here for the manual reset. Your igniter is right behind this flash plate. And right here is your burn tube. 
<coughs> excuse me. Now, propane has a chemical in it called mercaptan. And spiders, dirt daubers, bees, they love the way it smells. So if you have your unit in storage, sometimes not even in storage, they'll build nests in here and that could cause your water heater not to work. If you've got some pipe cleaners to clean that out, that'll really help. Also, if you notice, uh, you know, once you put your cover plate back on here, and if there's a lot of debris and, you know, just soot and grime up the side of your RV, uh, especially right over here over the, the vent. Um, if that's dirty, that means that there's stuff in there, debris that needs to be cleaned out. So just watch for that. Rear stabilizer jacks on the back, once again, with the strong arm. Black tank flush right here is located on the back as well. When using this, be sure not to use your potable water hose, just use your regular water hose and make sure if you are gonna flush that black tank, that the black tank is open before you cut the water on. Because let me tell you, that's not a day anybody wants to have. Backup camera up there as well. Cable and satellite inputs right here and your terminations as well as your low point drains are right there, easily controlled by the nozzles here and denoted by the color. Gray tank for gray handle, black tank for black handle. Now, what we like to tell people is if you're set up at the campsite, you don't need to keep those open all the time, especially the black tank, because what, what can happen is what's known as a pyramiding effect of the solid waste will get in there and stack up. That could cause some issues. So just keep that closed. You don't have to open it up all the time, but if you are gonna flush it, do the black tank first and then do the gray tank. You got your 30 amp connection right here. Just make sure when you are at the campsite that this is turned and locked into place. If you're lucky enough to have a power cord that has a little LED light to let you know that you have juice, you'll see it there. Uh, screw it in to keep it additionally safe. And if you're not getting any power, just check the junction box. Make sure the circuit breakers are on. City water connection here, fresh tank fill if you're gonna do some boondocking. And you'll also notice you got the little pressure release valve or the vent right there to let you know if you got a little bit too full. Now you do have a suburban furnace on your cruise light as well. It'll be a 20,000 BTU furnace. The vents are right here. Just make sure that you don't block that with anything that could catch fire. Other side of your pass through storage. Once again, everything will be magnetic and anti-slam. And now that we've seen some features on the outside of your Forest River Salem cruise light, what do you say we go take a look at some features on the inside? Right, so now that we are inside our Forest River Salem cruise light, it's a little dark in here, but hopefully you can see this. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to look for is gonna be your control panel. This is the KIB uh, control panel, and you'll see you got your water pump, your water heater, as well as your light controls, and either your slide and awning or just your awning. If there is a slide, you'd see slide room in and out. This is the awning controls, up for in, down for out. Uh, and if you're gonna use the water pump, this is mainly for when you are dry docking. You don't wanna cut this on uh, if, you got, if you're hooked up to city water because there's really no need to it. You do have a water heater and you'll notice that it's trying to get the direct spark ignition going. Um, if it does light, that light will go off. That's how you know that the hot water heater is on. This right here checks your battery. If your cruise light, if you go to like run the slide out or you know run the awning and you know you're hooked up, you know, oh, I think I got power in my batteries. If nothing's working, you check your battery. Just look, if it's over two thirds, you should be fine. If it's under two thirds, you won't be able to run slides out. Uh, for your fresh gray and black tanks, same thing, just let you know what the levels are. If you know you flushed out your tanks, you come in here to check in and your black or your gray is still showing like two thirds. There's sensors on both sides of the tank that might have some water caught in between them. Just let that drip down, give it about 15 minutes, then come back and check it, it should show empty. Now, your great thing about your Forest River Cruise Light is you have a dimmer switch. To cut the lights on and off, you just push it, and then to dim them, you push and hold. And what that'll do is that'll dim the lights down, you push and hold to bring them back up. Just a nice little feature added into your Forest River Salem Cruise Light. Now, you will have the Versa setup when it comes to your sofas, your dinettes, the cushions will come apart. They'll be separate. They're plush. They're comfortable. You can take those off from the Velcro. Your dinettes will reduce down into a sleeper. And you'll notice that you have the stow and go storage as well. 
little side opening door with the storage tubs. Very nice little feature. You just take this off the legs, set it down onto the dinette, and then you use your cushions to fill out the rest of your sleeping area. Now, you're either gonna have the Furion or the Boss entertainment system inside your cruise light. And very easy to use. You got your HDMI port there, USB port, main power in the middle. You can change the mode as well as change the zone. So if you want the USB, the Bluetooth, or just changing sources, maybe the HDMI, cut the music on the inside, cut the music on the outside. You're also gonna have the Coleman Mach 13,500 BTU roof-mounted AC inside of yours. Controls are you know, pretty easy. Low cool right there, high cool right there. This is your temperature control gauge. Blue is obviously for cool, red is for hot, and then you also have the fan. If you just want the air circulating, you don't want the air conditioning on. And you got your filters right over here. And if you wanna close your ducts, there you go. You still get air coming out, but it's very light. This is for you know when you really need it to cool down. And that's also the level of how loud it is when you have it running. On your kitchen, you're gonna have the drying rack over your undermounted sink with the pressed surface and the high-rise faucet. Large window, plus you're gonna have cement-backed backsplash. That just keeps it safe and secure. Now, as far as your cooking inside your cruise light, you're either gonna have the Furion or you're gonna have the Greystone. And they both work pretty much the same. You'll have a glass cover, a grill style grate, and your front burner will be a high output. Now, if you have gas inside your propane tanks and it is running, you pick the burner that you wanna cut on, like this one here, I push and I turn it to high, and then I have my igniter handle, which only turns one way. And you'll notice the spark flying when I switch these. If you do not have any spark flying uh, when, when you do turn it, you can actually lift this up and lift this tray up as well. There's a little connector that might come disconnected in transit. Just put that back, that should connect your connector. You wanna cut your oven on, it's just a tad bit different. Open it up, push in and turn until you see the little flame. That's when you know you're on the light setting and then turn your igniter. Now you're gonna have the Greystone or the Furion microwave. If you're lucky enough to have the big 30 inch, that's gonna be a convection microwave, but all of your cruise lights are gonna come with the Everchill 12 volt electric fridge, freezer combo. Now this is frost resistant. You do have your controls in here for your freezer to go from cold to coldest and your power and temperature controls down here. Push the button just to change what temperature you want and then to, to cut it off, you just push and hold it for 10 seconds. Now these do run off a of 12 volt, which means you can run them off of your coach batteries, but ju just be careful. Uh, you do have solar quick connect on the outside. So it's always a good option to get some solar panels to connect up to that, because that'll trickle charge the battery. Make sure you don't run out while you're cooling this down. Underneath, inside, uh, you know, near the kitchen area, you should have the fuse and circuit breaker box. What's great about these is these fuses have a fault setting. So if one of the fuses is blown, you'll see a red light in the middle letting you know that that one's bad and needs to be replaced. You even have a handy dandy little uh, see-through panel right here that as you walk by, you notice there's a red light. Okay, maybe something's wrong. Uh, but as always, if you go to run the microwave, the AC, the radio, you know you're plugged into shore power. You've checked that, something's not working. You check the fuse box, it's still not working. Bring your unit into Camping World and let our folks take a look at it for you. You got your suburban furnace controls right here. Pretty simple to operate, cooler to warmer. And down here, you know, are your sliding, you know, this is your temperature gauge to let you know, you know, the sliding gauge gonna let you know how warm it is. Come into the bathroom on your cruise light, you're gonna have a Dometic plastic bowl with foot flush. It is high rise and you'll notice with the foot flush, you know, you just push it down just a little bit to run the water, push and hold to flush. If you notice that the flapper is closed, but the water's still draining, you can fix that by just taking some Vaseline and rubbing it around that bottom, uh, bottom of that black rubber lip, that'll help out. If your bathroom has the vent and fan, you'll notice the vent is just a turn knob to open and the fan is a push button. Your shower, whether it be the standard uh, surrounds or 
the Neo angled shower. The controls are pretty much gonna operate the same way. You got hot, you got cold, and you got your shower nozzle with open and close right there. And your sink is gonna be a single basin with hot and cold. And your medicine cabinets, one thing to note about that, yep, so I thought, you'll notice the medicine cabinet has a little black string on the back. That actually hooks to this clip right here and keeps it safe while in transit. And even though your cruise light is small, we still got two grown men in this bathroom. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit uh, about your bed. So up front, you're gonna notice dual USB charging ports on both sides. Plus you should have 110 power on both sides and little cubby access. You'll have roller shades with a white back. And if you have the Murphy bed system, it is a release latch system. There'll be a little lever down here. Just pull that. Raise your Murphy bed up. I <laughs> get the blankets out of the way. And there we go. Now we have our Versa Jackknife sofa, which once again, with any of the sofas, any of the dinettes, if you're converting them from the seating area to the sleeping area, please just be careful. Don't hurt yourself. If you're not comfortable, ask somebody for assistance. Push and pull, and there you go. Versatile, comfortable, and great. So hopefully that gives you some tips on how to use your Forest River Salem Cruise Light travel trailer. If at any time you have questions, that's what we're here for at our over 180 locations with Camping World and Gander. If you have any problems, just bring it in. We'll be glad to help you out because at the end of the day, we just want to make sure you enjoy that camping experience as much as you possibly can.